Scott Geekus with Walsh Trading at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago at the CME Group. What's the first of all? What's the mood there today as we get closer and closer to uh, Friday as a, a holiday? Yeah, right now it's pretty dismal. <clears throat> With the grains just across the board, we have a pretty much a perfect bear storm. So we have all the trade war talks that have yet to materialize. We haven't heard anything positive or negative lately. That is pressuring price a little bit. You also have South American production being increased as for corn as well, so we mean. So that is adding pressure to the downside. So with that being said, the volatility right now is elevated quite a bit. Uh, in, uh, in soybeans, it's 14 versus about a 10 the 20 day uh, historical volatility for corn it's very high it's very heavily skewed to the upside calls with a tremendous short position with all the traders are out there you know it's really hard to find a way to get short these markets right now and everybody is waiting for the the the, the short covering to start and it's only going to take one big order for that short covering to start and you're going to see a big move fast and hard so everyone's waiting to see and just watching the headlines for right now are the volumes becoming more and more light as we um, go forward through the day? Yeah, and that's typically what happens when you see near record short positions, either record highs or record lows. As soon as we reach those exacerbated levels, you're going to see volumes start to dwindle off because nobody wants to put on a new position one way or the other. That's, uh, it's uh, certainly stacking up that way. A little bit of a rally in the wheat today. Yeah, with the wheat market, it's holding steady, even with the Russian production being raised as well. Uh, U.S. wheat right now is hands down the, the most attractive wheat prices in the world. So we're just waiting to see if we can get those exports out for the wheat market. All right. Does the dollar play into that? Yeah, it's definitely playing in a, uh, into that, uh, giving a little bit of extra support for the, the wheat market. Okay, let's check out and see what the dollar is right now. Uh, earlier in the day, when we first started the day, it was just kind of mixed. It still is right now. In fact, the June is flat. It's unchanged at 96.650. The September dollar is up just uh, 10 points. The December's down 90 points. So a very, very quiet trade for the dollar index as well. Scott, when we come back, we'll uh, see what's going on in the livestock trade. So stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Scott Geekus is still at the edge of the trading floor, standing by patiently waiting. Um, all right, let's start over here in the, uh, the cattle market here first. We saw a little bit of a bounce yesterday. In fact, we'd almost have to call it a rally about mid-session, pulled back. But today we're weak again. And uh, so what's the prospects of maybe doing higher cash trade with weakness in the futures? Right. Right now, in the cattle market in particular, I think it's just a little bit of a profit taking going into the longer weekend, you know, with that bounce off of that big spike lower. So right now, what we're doing is we're watching the 124 calls. There's a very large amount of open interest in the cattle market, right around about 5,000 open interest. So we're going to keep an eye on the upside to see if that position keeps building. Uh, as far as the support level goes in the cattle market, we're looking at 121 and a half. Okay. Well, what about feeder cattle then? You know, we've uh, had a few of these contracts go all the way up to 160, go north of 160 for a time, but then they kind of pull back a little bit. Is 160 kind of a line in the sand that uh, we need to work with? Yeah, the 160 level for feeder cattle is, is definitely going to be important, but more or less we're going to be waiting for that cattle on feed report to see where, which way that it's going to tip, either above or below. I'm, I'm glad that you talk about that cattle on feed report. There are some estimates that are out ahead of that cattle on feed report. Some are saying that maybe this report uh, could be a little bit to the bearish side on feed numbers, 101.7, placements at 103.3, and marketings at 96.8. What do you think? Uh, it's going to be in the numbers, so as we're going to wait to see how that's really going to play out. But keep in mind that the first, first quarter production, it was a little bit higher than expected as well. So we're going to see how that number plays into that number. Scott, where's this pressure in the hog market coming from today? Uh, I think the hog market in particular, I think it's just more of profit taking. The yeah, thing that has to be noted in the hog market in particular, in the June options, you're look, it's the options are pricing in a 12 and a half cent move. That is extreme amount of volatility and a lot of premium in that market, especially when you have $3 limits in that market. Okay. Scott, always good to visit with you. We wish you and your family a happy Easter. Scott Geekus there at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago.